Hi, I'm Aaron Stash with the Electric Home Show. We're here with Mike Gunderson from Compass Heating and Cooling, and we're gonna look at the LG heat pump water heater. I'm Aaron Stash. Welcome to the Electric Home Show. Mike, how are you today? I'm doing good, how are you? Good, good. Fantastic. So tell us why a heat pump water heater? So I decided to do the heat pump water heater. Um, I had originally wanted to do tankless, um, and quite honestly, it was because of my grow tent for my peppers. Uh, I did not want it to get too cold in the basement, and I felt maybe the heat pump water heater would make it colder. Um, I got a, a heater for the tent, and so I figured, well, I'm gonna go ahead and go with what I wanted originally, which was the heat pump water heater. So let's pause there for a second. So what you don't see on camera is Mike has an amazing system for growing vegetables, peppers, uh, Napa cabbage and all things in the winter time. It's February, 2025. Yeah. And you know, maybe a unique situation. Not everybody's buying a water heater so that right. their indoor peppers are gonna be okay. But yep. you know, I think that's one of the key challenges people hear about is you know, we're running a dehumidifier all the time with these heat pump water heaters, yep. essentially. Mm -hmm. And I've heard that you could cool this room down. Some people have said 20 degrees, but what has your experience no. been? So definitely not, uh, I wouldn't say that there's no cooling coming in here. It does have cold air blowing out of the back. So the air comes in through the top on here and then blows out the back and it is cooler because you're removing the heat. Right. Um, however, what I have experienced because we removed the natural drafting flue pipe. So in the winter time, I was constantly drafting. The warmer air here was going up and therefore losing any heat that I had in the space. So with that, mm -hmm. essentially your gas water heater, any combustible fuel water heater right. has a chimney on right. it, right? That's right. And so that chimney or that flue pipe taking that um, combustible air out of the house, but it's also taking warm air with it, My right? condition air, that's correct. Okay. Yep. Um, so that's been capped. Uh, typically when we get cold weather for a week, when I say cold, we'll get down into the single digits and stay there. Um, and I would get down in the basement 56, 57 degrees. Uh, this year during the weather we've had right now, it's like five degrees outside as well. Uh, and it's 65, we'd say between 65 and 67 with the water heater running. So that's definitely made a world of difference. I, I believe also once we get into the summer, I've only had this in since October, uh, but once we get into the summer, I do have a dehumidifier for the basement area. Um, I think that it'll actually run considerably less, not necessarily because the water heater is doing some of the dehumidification, which mm -hmm. it does, um, but I'm not having the hot humid air coming down through the right, flue right. When, when the water heater's not running either. Just to be clear for everybody, there is no venting on this heat pump water heater. So everything is contained inside the building envelope. And so Mike doesn't have to worry about hot air, um, conditioned air from his house going outside during the winter time, but it is going to dehumidify the space to a certain extent because of the heat pump on top. Now is a great time to remind you to like and subscribe to the Electric Home Show. Now, while we've been talking, mm -hmm. the heat pump kicked on. That's correct, it's running right now. <laughs> it's pretty quiet. Like I can hear it because my ear is literally next to it. Yeah. Um, but we were talking earlier and you don't really hear anything. Right. And that's another thing that we've heard is that heat pump water heaters can be very loud. Is there a reason for this LG system versus a different brand that you chose? So the LG does have a uh, twin inverter compressor in there, uh, and that is supposed to be a quieter system. That's what will make it a quieter unit. Uh, but it is literally, the compressor is right in here, and your filter and where air is, the air is going in is right here. It's directly below here, so it's not going to muffle noise too much. Mm -hmm. It's just literally a quiet compressor. And we're in a mechanical room right now, right. but you know, if this was in a closet or area near a bedroom, this isn't really going to bother you from a, a sound standpoint because of how quiet it is. Correct. Now, we're about six feet tall, each of us, and this, how big is this unit? What, how many gallons? This is a 58 gallon. So LG has 58 gallons and 80 gallons. And does this have enough hot water for your family? You've got a couple teenage uh, daughters here and yep. things like that? Yep, uh, it is plenty of water. We don't ever run out. I have it set at 130. Uh, initially, I had it set at 120 and on heat pump only mode, I did run out of hot water when I had a lot of guests. Uh, but typically, the kids are taking their showers at night. 
Uh, we take ours in the morning. We never have any issues. I do keep it in auto. So, you know, we do want it to be comfortable. It's not so much about as much as about the savings and I have to run a heat pump only. Uh, but so it, doesn't, the, it doesn't cost me that much to operate. So, so the auto mode, because in addition to the heat pump water mm -hmm. heater, the heat pump on top, yep. there are electric elements inside of this. That's correct. So the auto mode is running both the electrical elements like a traditional electric water heater mm -hmm. and then the more efficient heat pump. That's right. Okay. And it depends on how much water is being used as well. Uh, my understanding, the heat pump would run by itself, but if the temperature drops down below a, a set point, um, which is determined by the manufacturer, but uh, then it'll kick in electric to help it. Um, you can go to turbo mode as well, and uh, now it'll kick in sooner, and so therefore you're heating the water and able to consume more um, without running out. And on the turbo mode, you said you had a lot of guests over when you first installed it, Correct. but then you put it on a turbo mode to really help you recoup that hot water faster? That's right, uh, and we did not run out of hot water. I had a lot of adults in the house and several kids, so you know, several loads of laundry every day, two, three loads of dishes every day, and we never ran out. Okay. And of course, many showers. <laughs> right? Hi, I'm Aaron Stash. Thanks for watching The Electric Home Show. If you're a homeowner interested in a healthy, energy efficient electric home, reach out to us at electrichomecompany.com to schedule your free virtual coffee today. Thanks for watching. What drew you to the heat pump technology? Uh, one, it was very quiet. I really liked how quiet the outside units were. Um, and at the time, a lot of it was the ductless units that we were really doing. Uh, and of course, they're very quiet inside also. Uh, then we had a couple of manufacturers that came out with low ambient, in other words, very cold outside temperatures you could run it. And they heat, the, the heat out of them was extraordinary. I was like, why in the world would you not want to have this? Both co the comfort level and Obviously, they were very efficient as well and still continue to be uh, more and more every day. But that's what I really liked about the system. And Fantastic. And you're really a specialist in the area in terms of those units and now this water heater. So as we look at this LG water heater, yeah. this is a 58 gallon. It also comes in a larger size. Correct. How would someone choose between the 58 and the 80 on a cost basis or efficiency sure. basis or... How does somebody make that decision? So the cost is considerably more to go to the 80 gallon, which is the larger size. So they just have two sizes. Mm -hmm. Other manufacturers do have many sizes uh, to choose from. 50 gallon is really the smallest I would ever recommend. And it does depend obviously how you use it. So if you have uh, a Whirlpool tub, right, then you'd want to have that 80 gallon sitting there mm -hmm. waiting on you. Um, but aside from that, a lot of bathrooms in a large home with one water heater, then you would probably look at the 80 gallon as well. Uh, otherwise, the 58 does pretty well. Uh, I believe the rate is 72 gallons for the first hour out of the 58 gallon. And again, normally we have four people in the house um, and there's no shortage of water running. So we don't, we've don't we not run out other than, like I was telling you initially, when it was set at 120 and heat pump only, that was just a learning curve. But other than that, no mixing valves, no nothing. It's just 130 and we do perfectly fine. With so that. maybe talk about the mixing valve. So in, in mm -hmm. the system that I'm planning to do, we are wanting to do a mixing valve. Mm -hmm. And our understanding is, you know, by setting the temperature of the heat pump higher, um, we can mix it down with the thermostatic mixing valve to Correct. 120 degrees, yep. potentially get more hot water out of the system that way. But why did you choose not to do a mixing valve here? So it's a, it can be clearly done without it. Um, but also having water stored at a warmer temperature does use more energy. So uh, with the idea that it wasn't a need for us, um, I think if it would be more, uh, maybe if you had a water heater and you said, hey, I would like to have something else, you added another bathroom onto the house or something, mm -hmm. then I would look at it. But 80 gallons has been a pretty significant amount of water. Right, right, uh, absolutely. This one, this one here being 58, and like I say, you do 72 in an hour. Um, it's not really an issue at 130. Now, one thing to consider is the temperature you set water heaters in general at. 120 is a pretty safe temperature. You start getting up to, say, 130. If you have small children, um, you know, you just want to make sure that it, it is safe to be able to have 130 mm -hmm. degrees at your house. You, know, you don't want to have just hot water turn on because it, it's a shorter time where it actually could be a little too hot for them. Right, so you can set issues. this higher, but mm -hmm. essentially you're using a mixing valve 
at your shower or at your kitchen sink. And so it's mixing down at the point of use to 120, 110, whatever's comfortable for that person. But Mm -hmm. if you're not doing that, definitely be careful with how hot you're setting your water heater if you're not using a mixing valve or if folks don't know kind of, hey, the water heater here is maybe warmer than what you're used to. So be careful, right? Yeah, Yeah. and the temperature is, whether it's gas or electric appliance, it's the water temperature is changing. The nice thing is on this is you know the exact water temperature, right? It's not a an ABC or hot, hot or hottest setting that you just turn a dial on the gas valve like you do on the gas mm-hmm. water heater. So you don't really have an actual temperature on those most of the time. So it's nice to have that as well. Now we're located right now in uh, the mechanical room. Mm-hmm. Tell us about how much space does something like this need? It doesn't need to be vented, but it's still pulling energy from mm-hmm. the air. You can't put it in a closet and just close the door, Absolutely right? Absolutely not, no. If you put it in a closet, you would want to have it vented. And there are kits uh, for those. Uh, we have them at our shop and you you can put them on both sides or just one side, depending. Uh, what a lot of people can do or do do in a closet for instance, I can pull air from that closet. You would just have to have some sort of either a louver door mm. or a vent coming in. And then the exhaust air you would want to have go out, whether it's into the living space or, you know, you may be able to put it, uh, you know, into a laundry room. Okay. I know uh, a, a plumber friend of ours, he has a heap of water heater. He actually pulls the, the air for the heat out of the laundry room. So he's not really pulling anything from anywhere other than where it's already wasted. So whether you're pulling heat from a refrigerator or a laundry room or something, you really want to know where is your heat pump water heater getting energy from? Now, another thing that's different on top here is there's a filter. So how often do I need to clean or change that? I've checked mine. I I believe I've done it once since I've had it since October. Um, They're very easy to clean. They pull out. I can pull this guy real quick. And that's it. So... And just kind of vacuum that off, rinse it off. I rinse it off in the sink, um, similar to what I do with ductless systems, and then shake the water out. You know, I'll tap it dry with some paper towels and put it back in, but uh, it can go for a pretty long time. Okay. Yeah. And this one here, that's one thing nice about the LG as well that I like, um, is it is a lot easier and it's a little more quality. Sliding in, it sounds kind of funny, but some of them are not that way mm. and they're you're having to bend them to get them out. and. What is LG in particular, like what drew you to this brand versus some of the other ones? I think the LG product is a high quality product. It's made by LG, where other water heaters are made by someone else, right? The components, a compressor in an AO Smith, which we also put in, uh, is not necessarily made by AO Smith, it's made by somebody else. Same thing with the GE water heaters. Uh, so it's, um, you know, we had experience with several brands. Well, when I was looking for my own, I, the LG was one that I just had a lot more uh, I just liked it a lot more. All right, you know, yeah. great. And, you know, in terms of installation, mm-hmm. how is this different from any other tank water heater? Is it is yeah. it different? Uh, so the, the main thing when you're, especially if you're going from gas, um, this is a 230 volt uh, unit. Uh, it would be a 30 amp circuit. Uh, so yeah, you would have to run power from your, your panel. In most basements, that's not an issue. Um, our electricians can do it pretty much in any house. So mm-hmm. uh, that's not a concern, but it's not just something that a homeowner would put it in and say, now I have it. Now, if you have an all electric water heater, very straightforward, it'll slide right into the place uh, of that. Uh, there are water heaters that are 120 volt units. So mm-hmm. you can just plug in if you have, for instance, a, a force draft, uh, which you see in a lot of new construction home, you'll have one pipe going outside and a fan comes on and forces the, right. the air out while it's, while it's running. Uh, on those, they're they're nice to have because it does make it easy. However, a lot of them only come in the heat pump mode, uh, so you don't really have the option to have the backup heat uh, as much. Uh, and or then, the backup uh, heat maybe isn't as strong because it's right. only just plugged into the wall, typical 120 wall outlet. Correct. So it's got backup heat in there, but not as powerful as a 30 amp breaker. You know, for pulling 230. A lot more. Yeah, the higher your voltage, the more work you can get out of a system with less, with, with doing less, right? right? So you can basically double the amount of energy with a 230 volt versus 120. But ultimately, if I have an electric tank water heater in mm-hmm. my house right now, this swaps in just... Correct. Yeah, you can just go right in and use the same energy source typically than from what, from what you had before. And how and much... Use less. How much is this saving you on energy use or electricity use? Did you have a, 
electric system before or a gas system before? Uh, we did have gas. Um, I, it's hard to be able to tell you what it used on gas. You can go by the ratings, uh, you know, as far as energy, your energy mm -hmm. guy that comes on the water heaters. Um, and you're under $300 for both. It's pretty comparable, much like heat pumps. And if you have a high efficiency furnace, it costs about the same to operate um, because we're lucky in Illinois, we have cheap gas prices and mm -hmm. electrical prices. So electricity is not very expensive either. Um, so that I would say is for us, it's more of a, a wash either okay. way that we go. Yeah, a lot of the, the folks I've talked to who are kind of anti heat pump water heater yeah. like to say that it's more expensive than a gas water mm -hmm. heater. And again, it's really gonna depend on where you're located. If you're using propane or fuel oil or something else other than a natural gas source, mm -hmm. then your prices are gonna vary. We're here in the suburbs of Chicago and Illinois. Yep. And like Mike said, we've got you know cheap gas and cheap power um, to a certain extent. Right. But you know the other thing with this electric system that's interesting is you could be running it with a solar um, array. I don't know if you have solar or- We do, yeah. yeah. And so if you're seeing essentially your solar can be powering your water heater, right. whereas your solar is not gonna power your gas water heater, but it can power your electric water heater. That's right, yep. All right, well, thanks so much, right. Mike. You're very Appreciate welcome. It. All right. All right, thanks for visiting. Thanks again to Mike Gunderson from Compass Heating and Air for sharing his 58 gallon LG heat pump water heater. If you're a homeowner interested in a healthy, energy efficient and electric home, reach out to us at electrichomecompany.com. I'm Aaron Stash. Thanks for watching The Electric Home Show. Like and subscribe for more. If you're an industry professional interested in joining our network, reach out to us at electrichomecompany.com. Thanks for watching.